Hey guys, it's Greg here from Kinobody.com and in this video we're going to talk about how to break through a strength plateau. So I get people on my blog and you know emailing me saying, you know, Greg, uh, I'm stuck on my shoulder press. I can't build any more strength in my shoulder press. What do I do? Or you know, Greg, I'm stuck on my pull-ups. I can't add any more weight to my pull-ups. I mean, it could be your pull-ups, could be your standing press, could be your, could be your incline press, but eventually we hit plateaus. That's the name of the game. If we did not hit plateaus, if we could just get stronger week after week, well then everyone would be walking around doing 500 pound bench presses and 300 pound weighted chin-ups, and we just don't see that happen. So what happens is eventually, when you're making progress long enough, your body will plateau on a specific, a specific exercise, um, and you'll no longer be able to gain strength. And, and the reason this happens is because as you get more familiar with the movement, as you start you know, working on a movement more frequently, it starts to create more neural fatigue. So if you're doing squats all the time, adding weight, getting stronger, eventually those squats are going to become extraordinarily neurally demanding and it's going to, and you're going to go into the set and you're just, it's going to be so exhausting mentally, physically, uh, physiologically. Um, and so in order to get a fresh stimulus, in order to kind of, you know, just um, keep the ball rolling without causing all this fatigue and this neural stress, um, you want to change the variation. Just a small tweak. So you're still working the same movement and muscle groups, but you're doing something slightly different. So, uh, for example, when I help people bust through their shoulder press plateau, if they're doing barbell standing press, I have them switch and do seated dumbbell shoulder press. You're still doing the same movement, same muscle groups, but it's slightly different. You know, you're going from barbells to dumbbells, seated to standing. And that is enough. And once you go from, from barbell standing to seated shoulder press, you're gonna start making uh, progress again. Another variation you do is to grab a dumbbell, do standing one arm dumbbell presses. It's a little bit different of a, of a stimulus, but it's good. you're gonna feel fresh doing it this time. It's not gonna grind you as much. And you're gonna to start to progress on it. Then when you go back to standing military press, you're going to absolutely kill it. So this is called exercise rotation. This is a concept um, from Westside Barbell that's super effective. And just recently on my Road Trip podcast, I interviewed David Delanaviv, very bright uh, uh, strength coach. And he was telling me about this thing called biofeedback. And so the premise with biofeedback is that, you know, you don't, you let your body lead, lead the workout. You don't let a piece of paper lead your workout. So if you're going in and you're going to do bench press, and you've done bench press for a while and you know, you're not feeling the bench press, then you know what, that workout you switch to close grip bench press, some slightly different variation or dumbbells instead of barbells, and then you'll be a bit more fresh. And so the way you test that is with some cool calibration tests. So if you were to you know, do a hamstring stretch, see how, see how low you can go, then do a warm up set of bench press, and then go back to the hamstring stretch. If you feel more you know, open, more flexible, then that means that you're gonna get a positive response to an exercise. And uh, if you feel tighter or you know you feel stuck a bit, it means that you know you need to chill on the exercise. Why this works, we don't really know, but it's something that you can try out for yourself. And if you find that works for you, it's a cool tool. Um, me, for example, I've been playing around with that and it's actually pretty neat, but 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 a simpler method would just to be stick to one variation when you plateau on it, change to another variation. When you plateau on that, go back to your original variation or have another variation to work with. Um, so that, so with Keto Body, I recommend really like six core movements uh, to build an amazing physique. That's four for your upper body. Incline presses and shoulder presses build the most beautiful chest and shoulders. Um, you know, pull-ups and curls. So for upper body, it's, it's standing, uh, shoulder presses, incline presses, uh, chin-ups, and curls, and then for legs, I like to do single leg squats or single leg work, and maybe some deadlifts, like sumo deadlifts. So, if you want to make long term progress, you need to have different variations that you swap when you hit a plateau. So, I created the uh, Kino Body uh, Rotation Tactics to constantly make gains. When you guys see me doing, you know, really heavy bench presses or you know, 130 pound chin ups, the reason I'm able to get there is because I rotate the exercise when I plateau. And so I'm constantly making PRs week after week. So guys, download the report. It's gonna give you um, three awesome variations for each movement, each core movement for the Kino Body Physique. And it's something that you can fluctuate into your training. If you're following one of my workouts now, and you're getting stuck on some incline press or whatever, then swap in any of these variations. Any workout you're following, 
You can swap in the variation as long as it's the same movement, same muscle group. So guys, uh, in order to get that, there's the link right here. Go check it out. You can go click that link and you can download it for free, no charge. Um, I'm creating all these bonuses for you guys so I want to help you guys hit, hit your goals. And finally, um, the link is just kinobody.com slash 79. It's kinobody.com slash 79. Anyways, guys, we will talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye.